Hey everyone, welcome back with Beano Mac to another episode of Miscellaneous Monday where we continue our playthrough of Rockstar's Bully. This is chapter 5, the finale, the final chapter. We have more if you're down, interested down below. Next week I'm going to do an analysis on the ending of this game. And if you're interested in a non-commentary version, we have all the previous episodes down below in the description with or without commentary. Let's get into it. Hey, Darby! Hey, Johnny. Hi, yo, Jimmy. what's up, brother? Hey, Jack. So I'm like, yo, it's Jimmy! Hey, <laughs> <laughs> oh, funny, man. Yo, you man, so what's funny, going on? Jimmy. Oh, hey, girl, you're looking great. Ooh. Great. Thank you for that show, <laughs> Darby. Oh, wow, hey, Jimmy. Oh, yeah. Hi, boys, that's all I got to say. Later. So Jimmy. Jimmy. See you later. I love that guy. Bye, Come on, Jimmy. Let's roll. Pete! Hey, Jimmy, what's going on? Everything. I did it, man. I took over this dump. These morons are my morons. That's now. great. Just don't turn into a jerk. How could I? I? Hey, baby, how you doing? What you doing later? Just remember, Jimmy, not everybody likes you. Correct. They love me. Well, what about Gary? Gary? Forget about that twerp. Dude, it's me now. I run this place, and you're my friend, so please try to be cool. Oh man, you're bringing me down. Come on, let's go milk this thing for all it's worth. We might even find you a girl. Mr. Galloway, should you really be doing that? Oh, Jimmy. No, I suppose not, but life is unfair. You promised Ms. Phillips. Oh. God, what kind of world do we live in where I get punished for a minor indiscretion and Hattrick gets away with taking bribes from his pupils? He does? Yes. He sells advanced copies of tests to the sons of his rich friends and nobody says a word. Wait, what rich friends? Well, Darby Harrington for one. I can't believe he's selling tests. What if I got evidence of him doing this? <laughs> then I'd never need to drink again. All right, let me see what I can do. All right, so we're going to start off this playthrough with the final entry in the Hattrick versus Galloway side story series. And, uh, yeah, so pretty much we've just found out that Hattrick is a pretty corrupt guy, and now we just got to go out there and prove it. But once again, if you're interested, um, I do have, you know, chapters one through four down in the description of all the commentary and not commentaries. You know, playthroughs, if you're interested in those, check those out. Like I said, next week I'm going to do, Greetings. to finish you up the Bully Saga, me. I'm going to get my thoughts on the ending. Now, obviously, I can't do it in this video, and I'm not going to, you know, extend it past what it already is. It's going to be a very long video. I think it's going to be the longest video in the playthrough series, honestly, for uh, Bully. And, uh, you know, that's going to be, like, next week, on uh, next Monday, I mean is when uh, I'm going to have a poll so you guys can vote and, uh, you know, jeez, I can't even talk right now. <laughs> so next week, final bully episode, it's not going to be playthrough, it's just going to be, you know, me messing around, maybe do some classes or something like that while I get my thoughts on the ending because it is very controversial in the bully community. There we go. But until then, we're going to enjoy the final chapter of bully. Oh, wow, I can't believe I made that. <laughs> oh, that was a sick jump. I remember one time in the when going into the, the school, you know, there's the two separated steps in which you have to, to go up one set of steps. There's a little bit of break, then you go up a, a second set of steps. It's kind of, I can't really explain it very well if you don't know what it is, but I'm sure you'll see it again. I'll point it out. I was able to do a jump and then another jump in quick succession one time and actually get it. To where I didn't trip up the stairs there either, but that was the first time I didn't even know it was possible I could, you know, do a skateboard trick all the way up those stairs, so that's awesome. Come on, I need some health, Mandy. Mandy, don't be a bitch, come on. Bitch. It's an interesting choice of character they, they chose for the, the preppy for this. I think his name's... Ah, jeez, I know he even put his name up there, too. I think it's Bryce. But for someone who has no story relevance, it's, it's nice that they kind of gave us that. Of course, I trust you have my fee. I've got Daddy's checkbook with me. I guess he's just the prop, according to these guys. Kind of interesting, why was he carrying the paddle in the first place? Like, well, no, it's on the floor, but that's just an odd detail. Like, was it... 
you gonna use it in case of anybody caught him and whatnot? Because I mean, I don't think that's really a good backup plan, really. You know, he drinks on school grounds. Think of the children, Doctor Crabblesnitch. Drinking? I will terminate the employment contract of any staff member found corrupting children. Morality is the most important lesson we can teach the youth. Is that so? Then you might want to look at these. <laughs> that guy in the it's background is spray painting right in front of the principal kids. teachers. Fire him. What? You took pictures? And to think I trusted you, hat trick? You're fired. But I. I, I... <sighs> bye bye, fatty. And as for you, Galloway, there better not be anything to that drinking business. Real time cutscenes are awesome. I like how Hatcher just kind of, you know, casually walks off like it's no big deal. Like, you know, uh, you just got fired. And, uh, you know, like I said, yeah, you just see the guys in the background. <laughs> that is funny, just Jimmy. Just doing stuff. No, it's not. Jimmy, it's really funny. Chill out, man. Jimmy, I need to talk to you about something. Not now, Pete. I'm basking in adulation. I mean, running the school fairly. Dude, so fairly. No, Jimmy, please. Pete, enough. Yeah, shut up, Pete. The court hey, must on. know they're king. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, Jimmy? Forget the school. The whole town should know about you. You're like the mayor. You should leave your mark on City Hall. Yeah, <laughs> dude. Take a dump on the doorstep. <laughs> no, you homunculus. Not a dump. Something much more elegant. Paint a warning. Yeah, that's a good idea. I'll show everyone who's boss. That's right, Jimmy. All right, you girls wait here. This is gonna be something they'll never forget. Wait, Jimmy, don't forget about Gary. Wait, wait for me. All right, I don't really like Darby Harrington, but that was uh, that was a very entertaining uh, insult. But yeah, I guess uh, we might as well go over the story and my opinion of it so far. So, uh, as you know, in chapter four, that's when I started that said that the story started to kind of get, you know, very choppy, and it didn't really make much sense at all. And of course, that's when we were facing the jocks, you know, honestly, just to leave it from last episode, what happened is we pretty much beat up all the click leaders at this point. And now, as you can see, Jimmy is the king of the school. Everybody literally, like, is kissing his ass at this point. And uh, the thing that I don't really like about it is Jimmy kind of went from the, the cocky asshole, you know, kind of character where it's, you know, anti-hero, he's kind of lovable and whatnot to, you know, just an insufferable douche. And I mean, it's just, it's kind of, uh, feels forced in my opinion, you know, like I, I could get him, you know, the, the power going to his head and stuff like that, but just the way they do it, I mean, he, he does not act in any way of like how Jimmy has acted throughout the entirety of the game. So, I mean, Jimmy is an asshole, he's cocky, he's a smart mouth, all this and that, but I mean, you know, he's, I don't know, I, I don't really believe it, and I think it's just, once again, this is even worse in chapter four and there's a lot of plot holes a lot of things don't really make sense it kind of skips from you know wherever they feel like they need to get to without really showing us how things got to there and you're gonna see in this mission what i mean afterwards in the ending cutscene which you know i'll explain a little bit more it's also kind of odd i mean I, jimmy's never been shy of vandalism or anything like that you know he's doing things to look for fun and once again i guess it's the power going to his head but it is kind of Ah, uh, they was just kind of sort of talked into doing this. Especially when, you know, he made it a point in quite a few uh, cutscenes before this that, you know, he can't keep getting into trouble, he can't, you know, get expelled, this and that. And, I mean, beating people up and stuff like that, and, you know, he's already gotten himself in quite a bit of trouble, but to think that he's, uh, you know, he's doing something so goddamn ballsy, I mean, I... I can't think of anything crazier than this, you know, in a kid's mind, you know, I mean, Jimmy's obviously not going to go out there and, and murder anybody, but, I don't know, it kind of reminds me of, uh, Bart Simpson's in a way, you know, and how they kind of, the big deal was they, he cut the head off of the, the founder of the town and whatnot, so, 
That's kind of what it reminds me of in this. But no, apparently we have to take a picture here. And it took me a minute to figure out what I was supposed to be doing, but we'll get there. You, you can get there, you can get there, you know. You, you, you just, just keep going, you know. Okay, jeez. That's not a... <laughs> I hate, sometimes you just lose all your momentum on the skateboard and it's really annoying. But if you ever want to evade authority and not get caught, just spam the jump button while you move so you kind of move but for whatever reason they just can't grab you for whatever reason for the most part when you're doing like jumping stuff and they'll just kind of they'll catch up to you but they'll, it'll just be weird there's got to be a place where i could hide though but there's no like trash cans or anything for me to hide in but it's going down anyway Bully trouble meter is it's definitely the easiest to deal with it, unlike, uh, you, no you know, the, the GTA series, I'll say that, the Wanted Stars, and once you get the two stars, I mean, you're screwed, you pretty much have to find a bribe on the map, or, you know, a cheat or something like that, or, oh, my bad, and now I think about it, you can actually change your clothes in GTA and, and go to the paint spray, so I guess that's not entirely true, but, a lot more difficult to deal with than Bully's uh, trouble meter, because, I mean, the most they'll ever do is, Four guys will go after you, but I mean, they don't have any special, like, tanks or anything like that. They have, like, police cars every now and then, but it doesn't really mean anything because, you know, you're on bikes or cars or whatever. They just get out of it. So, I mean, it's, it's not like it's a big deal. There's Sheldon. It's him. All right, so let's see what the fallout of all this is. Did it. That's great. Listen, we've got a problem. I'm the king, Petey, the king. Whatever, you're a king with a load of problems. I've only been gone a couple hours. What could have happened? All kinds of things. You remember that promise you made about restoring law and order and improving the school? Let's just say it ain't exactly coming true. Well, if anyone wants a fight, I'm right here. I think Gary must be behind it, but trust me, everyone wants a fight. Listen, I gotta go. I'll talk to you later. Oh, man. So, yeah, uh, now everybody just suddenly hates us. I mean, honestly, Pete said it, Gary had something to do with it. They don't actually explain what the hell Gary did. I'm assuming he badmouthed us. But it makes no sense whatsoever. And you're going to see some of the fallout for that. And uh, after some of these series of missions, I'm going to kind of explain my, my theories on this. What? No, it isn't. What are you guys talking about? Uh, the library uh, is full uh, of rats! Uh, and I got my pre-pre-pre-med test next week, amigo! Uh, you're such a lame old uh, Some king you turned out to be! Oh, how I long for the old days! Sure, we were laughed at and mercilessly bullied by everyone, but at least you could study without fear of rodents coming near us! Oh, Get off! Oh, did you piss yourself again, Algie? Ew. No, oh, I swear. Algie. I spilled soda on myself. Soda? Oh. Right. What a bunch of sissies. Well, I'm not afraid of a few rats. Jeez, pathetic. So now we have to clear the, the library of rats, of course. Interesting little mission. I mean, they have the rats. I don't know. I kind of have to wonder What came first was it? They just wanted to put rats in this game because you can see them in other parts of the map like the boys dorm especially And you can throw them at people and stuff like that Or is it a case of you know, they made them for this mission and decided okay? Well, they're already in the game. Why don't we just put them in the you know the game the free roam as well But I, I do like how boy, you know incorporated dogs and stuff like that in the game obviously the big prank incorporates a dog. I think that's only one mission that really, where a dog is a, a center point of it. You know, obviously we have to get the dog, the crap, so we can, you know, put it in a bag and prank one of the teachers, Mr. Burton, the sexual predator. And, uh, you know, I think it's just, it's kind of like a cool detail, you know, because the GTA game, I think it took a long time before animals were ever really a, a focal, focal point. I think, was it GTA 5? Was I think the first one to actually have like a, a dog that you know can just be in free roam or whatever and then i think in gta online 
I forget if it was mods or not, because I'm not really too familiar with GTA 5. It's just not my kind of game. But I, I know you can like do first person plays on other animals. Still lurking in there. These crates? Yes, those crates. The rats appeared once those books were delivered. Everything seems to be fine, miss. I think I got them all. Thank you, Jimmy. If you have any late fees, I think we can just forget about them. I did that a long time ago. I, I mean, <laughs> thank you, miss. Man, 30 bucks, that ain't bad. I don't believe oh. this! Oh, no! How did it happen? Hopkins, come here, boy! Hey, what's oh. up, Mr. Burton? What's up? Oh, what's up? My gym oh. is up in flames! Look! Damn, how'd that happen? As if you don't know! You're a degenerate to think I trusted you! It wasn't me. Yeah, I'm no saint, but I tried Take to... Take note of that to guy behind Mr. Burton. the bullying. Ha! <laughs> bullying? I don't care about bullying. In fact, I encourage bullying. That's right. Builds moral fiber. Makes men. Yeah. Because you didn't make the team. You had to ruin it for everyone. Yeah, you bully. You're a pig. You ruined my life. What that guy right there. About? I never wanted to be on the team. You like to torment weak kids, and you've got the personality of a jock strap. Yeah, well, I called the police. You'll be killed for this, my boy. It wasn't me. You're done for, Hopkins. Oh. What? Who was that? It's Yuri. Oh There's people trapped inside. Oh, I'm really scared, mommy. Man, you guys are pathetic. I'll get him. Where's the fire extinguisher? By the stairs next to the locker room. But don't think I've forgiven you, Hopkins. A lot of interesting things I've known in that cutscene. A lot of them. So first off, let's start off with the the character I, I pointed out to you. That's actually a canceled character in this game. He's only in this cutscene. Uh, I believe they said his name was Bob, and he was supposed to be like another big wrestler character. It seemed from what we can see. And uh, yeah, it's just it's very interesting to think that they just had a cut character in the game at, in a cutscene, you know. And I'll actually point out another cut character later on. It's not in a cutscene, but he's in a mission. Thanks, Jimmy. But um, yeah. First off, there's that, so that's a very interesting detail. Jeez, that was pretty crazy. Thanks a lot. Um, also, what was Jimmy doing? Like, I mean, he, <laughs> A, the fact he just apparently didn't see the, the building on fire, and B, he just, where was he going? Was he just really trying to play the basketball, on the basketball court or whatever? I don't know, it's just a, a weird setup in my opinion. He should have just walked up and was like, whoa, what happened here? But, you know, I guess it was for the sake of comedy. And also, when you do gym class, yeah, Mr. Burton, he kind of gets on you and this and that or whatever, but I feel like our interactions with Mr. Burton up to this point happened pretty positive for Jimmy, so it's, it's weird to me that, uh, you know, that it's suddenly negative in that way, but I guess it's because Jimmy is, once again, he, Gary badmouths us, and so we're pretty much we're... Apparently, we're just, like, suddenly the, the least popular kids in the school. Like, even the, the really nice little kids and, and the non-clicks don't like us and all this other stuff I actually was showing it off at one point but uh, I decided to cut all that stuff out because this video is, is long enough but it's just really weird you know why people suddenly really extremely hate Jimmy but it looks like we always got Mandy on our side still the, the one thing that stays true is Jimmy you know his, his harem is oil went the wrong one there <laughs> I just like the way the dude delivers the line there. But yeah, we're getting into some pretty crazy stuff in the story now. Now people are... If it wasn't for Jimmy, those kids would have been dead. And that's just kind of crazy when you think about it. It's not my fault. Well, where'd he go then, you tramp? Oh, you calling it? Speaking Wait. of crazy. I loved Johnny. Not exclusively, I'll grant you. But I loved him. Now he's gone. Hey, what's going on? <laughs> Johnny's disappeared. Gone crazy. Abducted by aliens. I bet it was you, Hopkins. Yeah. Since you turned up, everything's gone really weird. King of the school. Who's the daddy-o now, huh? My love has gone. Find him, King. Quit poking me. You're both acting crazy. <laughs> Cut it out. Now tell me, where's Johnny? I don't know. Nobody's seen him. He got a little broken hearted after we split up, but 
It's not my fault. Someone said they saw a couple of asylum orderlies driving up to his house. But you know how people love to talk. Johnny wasn't crazy. Asylum orderlies? He was a real leader. Not like you, Jimmy. Look, I'll get your boy back, all right? See you later, freaks. See, I think this is why I, I always look at uh, Norton as like the second in command in this because, you know, he, he's even more worried about Johnny than the peanut guy who's supposed to be the second in command or whatever. But yeah, speaking of crazy, now we got to go to the asylum and figure out what the, what the hell happened to Johnny here. But yeah, right now it seems like we're going to do a mission for every click in which we have to, you know, solve some sort of problem for him. And some of them are pretty major, you know, problems that we're doing for him. You know, the nerds, you know, we all we do is clear uh, the library full of rats. So I can kind of see, get why, you know, if we're so bad and, you know, terrible and this and that, why they don't really want to immediately jump on the, the Jimmy train once again, even if it is a big favor to them. But, I mean, the gym is burning. We literally saved people's lives, putting our own at risk. We saved the, the, the gymnasium, you know, for goodness sakes, from, you know, sustaining any more further damage. And yet the jocks still hate us. It's insane. I mean, we literally saved Kirby and Yuri's life. And, you know, if I went to go up to him and talk to him right now, they'd want to kick my ass. It's... It, the, the story is not very uh, well executed in my opinion and uh, we're gonna see a little bit more of it I'm not very good at uh, traversing my way through uh, blue skies or whatever so you're gonna see me take the wrong path quite a few times in these missions uh, a few of them I'm actually just gonna outright skip the path there because it took too long but uh, this one you know I'll let you guys get a good look at the, the blue skies industries or whatever um, but yeah, I mean, we're gonna go and save our boy uh, Johnny from the asylum, and uh, it's it's not gonna be, we're still not gonna be on really good terms with uh, the greasers after that spoiler alert. It's just we're gonna do a lot of missions for each of the clicks, and you know it it doesn't change our standing whatsoever. I mean, sure we go up a little bit, you know, maybe ten respect points but the respect system is just so poorly designed in this game it doesn't matter but uh we already did in last chapter uh galloway away where we entered the asylum and that was kind of the baby version of this mission here you know there's gonna be a lot more in depth we can't get caught it's gonna be a lot more dangerous and that that was a side mission to whereas this is a, a main mission that we can't avoid But uh, you see that guy, I think that's um, um, the guy who's walking up that road. That is actually another canceled character in this game. Let me see if it's him. I can't really get a good look. Oh yeah, that's. Uh, I think that's him. Um, I think his name is Theo. I forget the names of the, the asylum orderlies. Like I know his name's Theo. I don't remember the, what, the other one. I think Theo may be the, the fat guy, but I can't remember. But that black guy... He's actually a canceled character as well. He's in the mission cutscenes, or not the mission cutscenes. He is in the missions in the asylum, but if you go in free roam, he's just nowhere to be found. Uh, same with the uh, asylum patients. Like the only thing you can find in the asylum is you can only explore about half of it most of the time, and on top of that, um, you. Jeez, I'm trying to think here. On top of that. Uh, there's no, like, uh, asylum patients, there's no, you can only explore half of it, this and that, it's, just, it's really weird, it's just, there's a lot of, uh, interiors that you can re-explore in this game, that you can't really, that there's not really much point to it, and they take a lot out of it for no reason, but yeah, there's, um, you know, check out the, the Nathan NS, he's the man for this stuff, uh, you know, he, he knows all the, the canceled characters. He knows a lot of just the random characters in town and whatnot that I wouldn't know. Uh, you know, I've recommended him pretty much every single episode of my commentary, but he is literally just that good in, in all the, the content we, that we get from uh, the boy community. He's the best, undoubtedly. And he does have a lot of help. He does give credit where it's due. So, I mean, don't think that he's just this one-man army. 
you know, I've already mentioned, you know, you Nathan, uh, the, the Deadpool XYZ the and the Simon Bastion and whatnot. Get an orderly uniform from the laundry room. The dropout set me up. What are you waiting for? But, um, yeah, he's, he's my man, you know, for, for checking that stuff out. And there's videos of him, you know, going over, you know, the cut asylum characters. There's voice lines of like the cut asylum characters. It was going to be a girl and the, the pretty funny voice lines, all things considered. And I think there's, I don't know if it's a big YouTuber in the boy community, but I think there is just a guy who focused specifically on just capturing the voice lines of them all. Uh, but very entertaining stuff. It's always... Me personally, I always love looking at beta content and cut things from games and seeing what could have been. But I don't know. I've, I've also talked to my friends about like stuff like that and games we've both been interested in and stuff like that. And he just, you know, they, they don't really give a shit. They're like, oh, so? So what if they don't have this? Oh, so this is supposed to be a thing? Who cares? So. <laughs> But yeah, I know I, there's, that stuff gets a lot of views, so I love to share it on this uh, channel if I can. And even if it's just like one guy who maybe doesn't know what's going on, you know, hasn't checked that kind of stuff out, or they find this game and they're suddenly interested in it. That you know, it, it'd be cool if I was able to help you know some really good content creators get some good views. Jeez, this looks like a prison. Kind of freaky. Man. But it's kind of interesting. There's just a lot of the same dude just walking around. I think it's kind of funny because they just re keep reusing the models. They actually have a few of the townies in this game are also like asylum inmates and whatnot. I don't know. The asylum inmates have this really weird fighting style. I'm not gonna. Jeez, speaking of them, uh, <laughs> they have this really weird style in the sense of um when you fight them and I, I can't I didn't really point it out or anything like that but it's very interesting if you have the chance look that up as well lots of stuff to look up in this game I know I'm not showing off myself but I'm just you know doing the missions themselves although this part of the mission I think it's kind of lame I mean you get access to new areas in the asylum which is cool and stuff like that but I don't know it's just weird to me like there's no challenge here it's just oh get out like, okay, well, who's chasing me? Nobody. It kind of reminds me of Dead by Daylight, like something you'd see in that game. But, uh, it's really weird because there's all this area, like, the majority of the asylum you can't look at in free roam, but now you suddenly can look at it. And there's nothing there. There's no challenge. There's no threat to overcome. It's just, all right, find your way out of here. I gotta find Lola, see if it's true or not. See ya. All right, Johnny. Have fun. See, it's ridiculous. I mean, the fact that we saved, literally broke this dude out of a mental asylum and all this and that, and he's still not really forgiving us and whatnot. I, I don't know. It's ridiculous. What are you looking at? Nothing. Well, it looks like you're looking at me, scumbag. Like I said, nothing. Oh, come on. I don't want to fight you. My name's Jimmy. Zoe. I was at Bullworth once. I got kicked out. Why? Let's just say Mr. Burton is a dirty creep. Seriously? I would love to teach that guy a lesson. He bullies everyone. You know, he goes jogging every day and regularly uses the porta potties in the park. Yuck. Yeah. So if we could catch him in one on top of a hill, then Mr. Burton could have a really interesting time in it. Yeah, but they're all chained together. We'll need to get some bolt cutters. Go get some from the Spaz Industries building and meet me at the park. Make sure no one sees you. So yeah, that's, uh, I mentioned it before, uh, about how scummy Mr. Burton is. Uh, I think this is definitely the scummiest act. I mean, he had us in Chapter 2 collect, you know, panties from the girls' dorm of underage girls. That's already messed up enough. But the fact that we now have to, you know, we're, we're going to take him out and teach him a lesson, not only because he was just a dick about the gym and just automatically blame us for it, but, I mean, the fact that uh you know he actually caused a student to get expelled due to complaining sexual harassment i mean he's you could it's up for debate either edna or mr burton 
I mean, you guys, you know, let me know which one you think is actually worse, because Edna, if you didn't realize, in Chapter 3, she actually date rapes a dude. Which, again, of course, Jimmy, he he's involved in the process of helping it, because... What a jerk, but, uh... Not a very good person, Jimmy, is either, when you think about it, but... You know, what do you, who do you think is worse? Mr. Burton, the sexual predator, or... Uh, Edna, the, the, you know... Hill Edna Cosby or whatever. I can't really think Why of a clever nickname. Clever is not my middle name, but now it's time to teach him a lesson at the very least. Whereas Edna, she doesn't really get a lesson taught. It's just kind of done in a very jokey kind of fashion. Probably because also, I mean, let's be honest. You know, society has always kind of had that thing where oh, if it happens to a girl, it's a hundred times worse than if it were to happen to a man. So I mean, who knows? Maybe that's the deal. As to why Edna doesn't really get punished for it or whatever. I mean, he could maybe argue, well, she's Edna. She's disgusting. Nobody, Everybody hates her and makes fun of her and even dressed up as her for Halloween. So uh, maybe that's already right, bad enough, but I don't really think so. But yeah, this is the introduction to our, uh, our girl Zoe, the punk kind of character. She's a townie girl Did and whatnot. And I don't think you can even uh, deal with yeah, her. I got him. Now talk to her in free roam like I th she's a very interesting character in a sense i think she's the only girl that sure doesn't just roam around you know the blue skies right. trailer park or whatever but uh she does become a part of the free roam later but as a as a student later on i'll take care of this you make sure he doesn't use one of the other ones this sounds like it's gonna be good <laughs> This is a very fun mission. Just the concept alone, I think, is, is pretty funny. But uh, there is a pretty, uh, pretty gross one as well. You'll see in, a, in about a minute. Although I guess for those of you that like that, uh, I think it's the scat stuff. Yeah, I'm sure you'll enjoy. It. You'll love it. But yeah, it's always a pretty cool character. I think, like the the original boy, like it was supposed to be where there was I think one girl that was supposed to be like the girl next door type deal, in which you know, you got the romance with her or whatever. I think Zoe, like, whenever I think of that original concept, I always think of Zoe just because I think they kind of did a much better job. Still amount, the same amount of missions that, well, like, all the girls right. get, like, two or three, but I think they did a much better job uh, with Zoe and just making it seem like her and Jimmy are more compatible for each other than, like, any of the other characters. <laughs> I love that Jimmy jump. It's so goofy. Reminds me of uh, the sneakers or tool thing I mentioned earlier in like chapter one. Uh, you know the way that guy runs. It's like a Family Guy sketch. It's hilarious. If, check it out if you haven't. But yeah, speaking of dogs, geez, now we got this thing chasing after us. And it's kind of sucks. I mean, yeah, the only way to get them off here is if you kick them. I'm not gonna do that because uh, it always makes me feel bad for them. But. Uh, well, let's see what the uh, the outcome for this is. <laughs> I love how we're just standing there waiting for him. I like how he she didn't even try to like hide the fact she was running towards the the poor body. The worst has happened. I'm covered in human feces. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's disgusting. Wait a second, wasn't it already open? God damn, I stink! I'm gonna have to shower for days with bleach! Ah, this is worse than when I got hazed! What if, like, their plan failed because, like, they had just cleaned the porta potties before he ever went into that particular one? You would think, since it's like supposed to be the rich part of town, they would have done that, but... I don't know. Time oh, for the preppiest here mission. Here is, Mr. Big. Yeah, it was you, creep. What was me? Don't play innocent with us. I tried that when Father caught me with Nanny. He gave me a good thrashing, and I've got half a mind to give you one. Hey, look, just get to the point. Someone stole our boxing trophies, buddy. They were heirlooms. Well, it wasn't me, rich boy, so relax. Well, if it wasn't you, then who was it? I bet it was those greaseballs. I know it, they've always hated us. 
And so much for peace in our time, Popper. Just great. Let's get them. Yes, it's time to teach those poor, disrespectful scum a lesson. Wait, relax. Maybe it wasn't them. Maybe it was someone else. Nobody hates us, apart from them. Oh, yeah, they do. Everyone hates you. You're all awful. Oh, la-dee-da. Now he tells us. You are pathetic, Hopkins. You're not a leader. Out of my way. Come on, men. Let's go. Okay. It's war. Hold on. Wait here. I'll go get your trophy back from those grease balls. Oh, man. So now I'm just gonna skip this. We're gonna go from spot to spot. No way, man. After the townie's been saying all that stuff about Lola and made Johnny crazy, we don't care about those stuck up jerks. The townies? Really? Yeah, and Johnny says you're no friend of ours anymore. But since you got him out, I'll let you walk away from this meeting. Well, since I already beat you, I guess I believe you. Yeah, see, like, Johnny should be like, hey, yeah, you know, thanks for saving Johnny. We're cool now, but we don't want to help you type deal. But yeah, I'm just going from place to place, essentially, because uh, I used the lawnmower, and I probably shouldn't have been messing around with it, but... Uh, that's probably what, now that I think about it, I might just make that the, the mission, just so you guys can see it, because it was, it was very fun and entertaining, just riding a lawnmower and running people over with it and stuff like that and for the mission, but it took way too long. But, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't really want to waste your guys' time too much with it. It would have been probably almost two hours because of how slow the lawnmower is <laughs> in this game. So, uh, yeah, that's kind of why I just decided to skip a lot of the stuff. There's nothing... You're not even really missing anything. Jeez, dynamite. Crazy thing is, is some mechanics are pretty decent in this game, but you'd think, you know, they they heard an explosion of some sort. You'd think, okay, maybe the other greasers... Not greasers, the other townies would check that out and see what the deal is. But Yeah, the thing with this game is, is uh, this chapter, I mean, is... Uh, now we have less missions, but they're much, much, much longer, which is pretty good. I mean, you want longer missions and whatnot. But once again, the storytelling is a little lackluster, in my opinion. And we're going to see, uh, you know, the true colors of Darby Harrington after this. Because as you can see, we're literally taking pictures. I love how they just kind of left the briefcase there. <laughs> Especially since it's open too. I mean, how the hell did they get all those rats to fit in there? Now that I think about it, with a, uh, you know, how, like how are they just not getting out? I don't know if they put in special compartments or whatever. What about they just don't care that I'm here? And we're gonna travel again. Yeah, as you can see, things are starting to come together now. Uh, you know, for example, uh, you know, Johnny mentioned about the fact that it was the townies that were talking about how they kind of slept with Lola and whatnot. And then, uh, <laughs> I love that the stupid dance. <laughs> Why isn't it not allowing me to take the picture? And then, um, we seen that they're the reason why the rats are in the library and they're the ones who stole the, the preppy's trophies as well as... So, I mean, it's all just coming together. I mean, they burned down the gym. And they're doing some pretty extreme stuff, too. Like I said, I mean, this is... The most we ever had to worry about in most games was people just kind of getting beaten up and, and stuff like that. But now they're kind of doing some pretty uh, crazy stuff, which makes sense. I think it, I think that's really awesome because it sets a precedent of... What did you find? You're not just in yeah, the minor leagues took anymore. Our trophies. Don't tell me. It was the Tooth Fairy. <laughs> yeah, either it was the Tooth Fairy or the Grease Balls. I wonder which one. Actually, trust fun babies. It was neither. It was those townies. Which townies? The ones who hang out by the factory. Them? Why would they steal our trophies? Don't talk crap, Hopkins. I'm not. I've got a picture to prove it. Why? They don't have any problems with us. Yeah, poor kids just love rich kids who act like stuck-up jerks, don't they? 
Listen, you overfortunate numbskull. They did everything. Put Johnny Vincent in the home, let the rats out of the library, everything, including your trophies. Why? Because I listened to Gary. So it is your fault. No, it was Gary's fault. You, my friend, have got delusions of grandeur. Nobody cares about you or Gary. You're ridiculous. Come on, Biff. Let's leave this king of this school to his pathetic little fantasies. You are an idiot, Hopkins. I've got a photograph. You know what you can do with that, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's a mission that a lot of people really hate. And, uh, boy, why did we get money if, like, they didn't accept the... <laughs> if they didn't accept our, uh, our answer? That's kind of weird. Ah, Hopkins. Now, I'm not one to give in to popular sentiment. You can tell that by your clothes. What? I'm saying you dress great. Irrelevant. As I said, I am not a people pleaser, but in your case, I'm going to make an exception. An exception? Cool. Yes, you are without a doubt the least popular boy in the school right now. Even that fat child who wets himself is more popular than you. Coincidentally, it has also come to my attention that you are a filthy, dirty, foul-mouthed, awful little vandal. Yeah, well, we already knew that. Very droll. A comedian till the end. Well, you'll have to pursue your comedic talents elsewhere, boy. Bullworth is not for you. I'm not the one who's funny. You know what's funny? You. You're a joke, you old creep. You and your stuck-up, lame-ass school with its bullies and sex pest teachers. This place is a dump, and you're a big-nosed freak. This school rewards losers and bullies. I just stand up to them. You painted obscene graffiti on the town hall, boy. I have it on good authority it was you. Oh, yeah? Then who squealed? Tell me that. A commendable pupil did feel the need to tell me you were responsible for this outrage. Gary Smith! Look, I may have painted a few jokes on the town hall, but that kid likes to torture people. Gary Smith is the next head of this school. He's responsible, courteous, and not afraid of being an unpopular leader. You are blind, old man! Blind! And you are leaving! I tried to contact your mother, but she's still off on a cruise. Until I hear from her, I will have to let you stay here in your room. But you may not wear the school uniform or uh, attend classes. Gotta be kidding you are me. leaving the academy to attend to your education elsewhere. Now get out. Whatever, man. Yep, unfortunately for us, the worst has happened. So now we need to, you know, we need to cool off a little bit. I'll get my explanation of some other things hey, after this cutscene. Hey, Zoe. You wanna have some fun, tough guy? What kind of fun? Not that kind. I only date older men or junkies. They're so romantic. Come on, what's wrong with me? <laughs> well, everybody hates you. <laughs> You're a little twerp. You dress terribly. But apart from that, nothing. Oh, okay. Good. Why don't we play a little game? Come on. By older men, I hope you don't mean Mr. Burton. Hey. So he's got some pretty big boobs, I'm not gonna Come lie. On. We're going to the Spencer I know I didn't warehouse. need to point that out, but I just I felt like I had to. <laughs> but um anyway, uh right, yeah, so my thoughts on the, the Darby Harrington stuff. A warehouse full of expensive looking junk. It makes it much more satisfying that all this is Spencer shipping. Wait, isn't Tad's last name Spencer? Boy, yep. Jimmy's not trying and to hide what he's looking at either. Game. Whoever smashes up the most stuff wins. But yeah, uh, back to what I was saying about the, the Darby Harrington stuff. A lot of people hate it because he, he literally outright says, Hey, I got proof. Darby doesn't give a crap. He just says, yeah, I'm going to do what I want. People think that it was like something where they tried to make it to where they were just looking for reasons to kind of continue the the reason for people hating and not believing jimmy and it does make sense i mean why doesn't jimmy show everybody why didn't jimmy show the nerves what happened with the uh you know the rats and the the briefcase and stuff like that but i think it fits because i mean i think just darby harrington is just a massive douchebag a, a jerk he's a, he's a monster i think he's one of the worst characters in the entire game morality wise and i think the game does a very good job of just showcasing that this is a beauty even before that cutscene so i mean i can believe it i don't think it's forced in that way at all it's still kind of lame that we pretty much did a mission all for nothing 
don't get me wrong on that, but I don't know. It's just a lot of people complain about that and saying, you know, Darby's an A, and he probably is. But I mean, I, I, I definitely believe it character wise for him. But yeah, this is a pretty interesting mission. Sometimes, it's kind of weird. Sometimes, I think it has something to do with our AI. Sometimes I'll just absolutely kill it in this mission. And, you know, I'm like four grand above Zoe and this and that. And then other times, I mean, it's pretty close. There are times where I, I've lost this mission, not on this playthrough. But I don't know, maybe it's something with the scholarship edition I'm thinking of in which I usually, you know, creamer and... Well, uh, oh yeah, see, see, <laughs> I probably shouldn't have uh, broken that because she was stuck on the stuff. So I'm assuming that's the AI is not programmed very well. But yeah, these are where the tombstones are from the Halloween mission. You get the Edna mask by destroying them all. But they don't give us money right now, so it'd just be a waste of our time to do it. But yeah, I mean, uh, you know, usually I. I think in the scholarship edition, it's somehow even glitchier than the, the PS2 version. It just is a very, 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 very terrible port of the game, if we're being honest. Like I said, I usually I cream uh, Zoe and this kind of thing. But as you can tell on this one, she's keeping up pretty well. And maybe I should stop using that terminology. <laughs> I don't know, like I already talked about she has nice boobs and stuff, so I mean, it's... Who knows? Who's worse? That you sound off in the comment. Who's worse, Mr. Burton or Beano Mac? More disgusting human being. But <laughs> yeah, I don't even. It kind of gets to the point where I don't even know where I'm supposed to go to to get more stuff to destroy. I mean, I guess I could, you know, go up to that step and oh uh, well, Zoe literally destroyed everything else in there. That's kind of lame. That that's that was a lot of stuff, I'm sure too. But the good thing is, is, it seems like her she doesn't know where to go next to destroy anything out of it. Never mind. I don't know where she's at, but it's probably not good. I probably shouldn't have been uh, messing around with a slingshot that much either. But got to get creative in these missions, you know what I'm saying? I think it'd be cool if this mission you. It was just about you didn't have to win. I mean, I guess at the same time, you know, it would be the challenge. You wouldn't have to do anything, but I like to think that, you know, we could have a... It would be cool if there was a way to where Jimmy was just a, a good sport, if you know what I'm saying. It could take a loss, but I don't know. I guess that's not our boy. Like I said, we just got expelled, so we got to blow off some steam, and this is the mission to do it. I guess I did do a pretty good job compared to her though, but I mean it seemed kind of somewhat easy. This is the best date ever. <laughs> Once again, I, I think it's funny how we just get paid. I mean, maybe you could argue maybe we hey, made Jimmy, a bet or something like that. Doing? Thirty bucks Terrible. I Everybody once, hates, I got sixty. Everybody but might hate you. But everybody laughs weird that we're getting yeah, paid for these true. random missions for Those no kids reason. Those are jerks anyway. But I tried. I know. I mean, I tried to do the right thing, make people happy, stop all the fighting, make everyone calm down. Now everyone laughs at me. People used to be scared of me, and now I'm a joke. It was Gary. It must have been. I know. I can't deal with the fact that that kid beat me. Well, it ain't over yet. God, one minor setback, and you're acting like a baby. You're pathetic. I've been expelled. They're just waiting for my mother to come back from her 58th honeymoon, then I'm out of here. How is that a minor setback? Losers! Oh, shut up, you fat dork. Whatever. You and your has-been friend don't scare me. See? Even a dork like that laughs at me. We gotta prove Gary was behind everything. We don't even know if it was Gary. All we know is townie kids beat up a bunch of Bullworth kids. I mean, I don't even care anymore. Well, we've gotta find out what's going on. Come on! Okay, but if we're gonna take on those townies, we're gonna need a bunch of backup. Someone big who doesn't hate me yet. Russell. Russell. He'll be at his house at Old Bullworth Vale. Does anybody else ever know it's just looking at Jimmy's face how greasy it is? How you doing? Compared to like everybody else, especially his nose. Like it's so red and stuff like that in the cutscenes. 
But yeah, the thing I never really understood, well, first off in that mission, hey, we were clearly behind the school, so I don't understand why the mission marker and everything like that, why we're still, you know, right in front of the boys' dorm. But also, it's just, I I'll never understand, like, Jimmy literally kicked every single kid's ass in the school, and I get the whole idea is, you know, the implication of this chapter is that for whatever reason, Jimmy was supposed to bring peace to the school, that's his mission, like with Jimmy, Lee, and somehow he didn't achieve that and Gary has convinced everybody that he didn't. And so despite the fact that Jimmy has pretty much kicked everybody's ass, easily, if we're being honest, they just don't fear him anymore. It's like, yeah, I mean, Jimmy probably should be going around kicking everybody's ass to get their respect again, but apparently that's just not the, the idea, that's not the thing he was... I don't know, it just doesn't make any sense, you know, how, like, even someone like Algernon, like, yeah, they, they made it a point, like, he doesn't really give a crap if he gets beat up anymore, and it's just, it's it's so odd, and a departure from what we've pretty much done and known for the entirety of the game up to this point. Yeah, now you're gonna see me, I'm, I'm having a tough time, like I said, I, I don't know, I just have a tough time traversing the map at this point in the game for whatever reason. I'm going the wrong way everywhere I go. There's going to be a few other sections that I just outright skip. I probably should outright skip this section too, if we're being honest. But I figured, you know, you get to see me, you know, stumble and, you know, make a fool of myself. But that's what I do in pretty much all the commentary versions anyway, so you know, nothing new there, folks. But yeah, just... I don't know, the, the game at this point, the story, once again, like I said, I've, I've mentioned it like a million times, it just falls apart and it just makes me, there's so many parts, pretty much every uh, mission in this chapter, I just think to myself, what is going hey, on here? Why is this happening? How did we get to this out. point? And the payoff is not always very satisfying at all. Only if Brussels gets to destroy. But the thing I do like about this is the fact that Russell, he doesn't give a crap. He's, you know, he, he actually has real loyalty. <laughs> I like how he crashes in the back of that car. That's awesome, but... Oh, whoops, poor Pinky. But yeah, only Jimmy's harem and uh, Russell's crew are the only ones that kind of stick by Jimmy. And, which is very interesting. Because, um... I don't know, you'd think that he'd be the most willing to, uh, you know, betray Jimmy's, you know, embarrassing this and that. But I mean, I think it really, I think it's awesome because it really does show that, uh, Russell's a, he's a real one, you know what I'm saying? You know, sticking by our side, whatever. Whereas everybody else, I mean, it makes, you know, it makes sense. I mean, but, uh, they, it's kind of just, all right, we beat them. Now they work for us. They don't really care about us. You know, Jimmy could probably, you know, die or something like that. They wouldn't give a shit. It's just so interesting. Something that always bothered me in this game is you can get a scooter for free roam and the carnival. I think it's like 75 tickets or something like that, which is a lot. The most expensive in the game, but... It's only like, you can only get the white color. And I don't know, just seeing, you know... The, like, even the one I'm driving right now is red. They got the pink, the orange, the yellow, the blue. They got a lot of different variations. I think even a green one, too. They got a lot of them. Boy, that cop is, can't be all right. I literally ran over his chest. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I don't know. It's just, it kind of bothers me that you can't just buy one outright and, and pick what color you want and stuff like that. But I don't know. I mean, I complain about the, the silly stuff in Boy, you know, the very fickle stuff all the time. So They're locked. I'm sure you guys are sick of my complaining at this point. What the hell? Well, we lost our one good friend, everybody. Oh, never mind. Uh oh, this doesn't look so good. What the hell do you think you're doing? What do you mean? Smashing into our barricade like that? Completely out of control. Are you crazy? I've got to talk to that Edgar kid. I don't think he wants to talk to you. And you can't get in while the power is out anyways. I 
Oh, here's another case of what the hell was this person doing here in the first place? Convenient, because you're going to see she's going to help us and, you know, guide us where to go and whatnot, but... What the hell is I mean, I guess it's kind of a thing of... I don't know, I guess the idea is that this is where all the townies just hang out at or whatever. But yeah, if you're wondering who the hell Edgar is, that's a good question because he's not actually mentioned up to this point. But yeah, he's the, the leader of the townies that we now have to deal with. It's, once again, just not very good uh, story crafting. And I guess you could probably look at, you know, stuff in chapter 1 and 2 and 3 and think to yourself, Alright, this isn't perfect, but... Jeez, but chapter 5, pretty much every mission, you just question yourself, like, what is going on? Who is this guy? Why is this happening? You know? More importantly, where's Gary? I'm surprised Pete isn't here, just happened to be here. The interesting thing about this mission too is, is it takes place immediately after the part one. Like there's no mission marker, it just, it's like a checkpoint type thing, which I don't know. I think it's the only mission that's like that in this game, which is uh, very odd. I wonder if, I wonder what would happen if I were to throw those guys into that electric fence. <laughs> I love the, the weapons, the bats. Yeah, also something that's odd to me too, when you think about the story, so like we're after Jimmy, we, we don't like him, you know, we're doing stuff with the prep kids, not the, well just the click kids in general too, I mean we all stay in the same dorm, I mean with the preps you could argue, okay, they all might just stay in the Harrington house, maybe that's why we avoid them, and all that other stuff, but, you know, if we're all in the same dorm and stuff like that, I have to wonder... You know, why, when we're having issues with these people, aren't we just going into their, their rooms and, and kicking their asses there? You know, Gary especially. I mean, Gary, with the other cliques, they kind of have hangouts and stuff like that. Where's Gary's hangout? Why can't, you know, if we're pissed off at Jimmy, why don't we just... I mean, if we're pissed off at Gary, why doesn't Jimmy just go and kick Gary's ass in the boys' dorm? Where the hell is he staying? You know, it's just... Kind of raises a lot of questions there. But, I don't know, maybe I, I've been complaining about the store for a while, and I'm just going to continue to do so, but... Because that's just kind of the, the guy I am, I guess. But, uh... <laughs> I don't know, it's just, I I think in a lot of storytelling anyway, the point is, is, you're not really supposed to ask questions a lot of the time, it's just... Accept what's there. Speaking of which, where are the adults in all this? Because you think this would be like an active, you know, factory or whatever, but... I don't know. Jeez, I cannot. I just, I just want to activate the damn switch. A lot of dumpsters back here, but I guess that's for these guys to hide behind. You like this? You like this? It's actually interesting that Zoe, in a weird way, even though she's supposed to be like the trashiest girl and whatnot, she's actually kind of saved herself uh, for us the most out of anybody. Usually it takes one mission to get a girl, maybe it takes two, like with a uh, uh, Pinky. But uh, I don't know, then again, she did say she wasn't interested in us. Let me see if I get another one in there. <laughs> I think if you spam the button, you can usually uh, just kick them as much as you want. Get the switch, dumbass. It's also interesting, they always revoke, re refer to her as Zoe, but everybody always refers to her as Zoe, so I don't know. It's just interesting little detail I noticed, I guess. Why does that guy think he's... What does he think he's gonna do just hide behind all these, like, breakable crates? Yeah, the Talents are actually uh, pretty decent fighters. I don't know, and I don't... And I don't know, I mean... Although they're they're different, I always just think of, like, the Townies and the Greasers should be 
theoretically pretty damn similar. I mean, they're they're just poor kids, essentially. And the greasers, they wear weather jackets and stuff like that, and they're into the bikes and stuff. But, I mean, I think it would have been a lot better if, like, the townies just kind of took the spot of the greasers. And, I don't know, maybe they could have... I think the original idea was they were supposed to have, like, a punk group, maybe. And maybe they're the ones who were gonna... I think they were the ones who transformed into the townies. Man, I can't. I'm not, speaking is not my number one goal, guys, I get that, but, um, <laughs> but, um, I don't know, it's just, I think it would have been worked out a little bit better if, I don't know, I'm just not a big fan of the, the, the whole Greasers thing, there's a lot of characters I like from the Greasers, Shiny's probably my favorite click leader, but I don't know, it's, it just kind of takes me out of it whenever I think of, you know, 2006 and have Greasers and bikes, and I know it's supposed to be like a fantasy world, but, it's supposed to be a lot more cartoony in the beta and stuff like that, but they kind of didn't go through it all the way. You'll see. Hey, <laughs> Awesome. I hope she's gonna be all right, cause I mean, that's. I guess if it was a more adult game, I'd be concerned, but I mean, I'm sure she can handle herself and whatnot. But, you know, making the ultimate sacrifice over there. That's the thing I like about Zoe, too, is she actually helps you in missions like this. So, I think it's pretty awesome. It's not just a... It seems like almost like a genuine friendship type deal instead of just, you know... Hey, give me your number, give me your panties, give me your picture on the wall type deal. Lisa first. <laughs> I love how the other guys are just standing there watching. Jeez, the clothes on. They got some pretty devastating moves, I'm not gonna lie. And they're a lot better at fighting than I remember, honestly. I remember the townies were kind of pushovers in the carnival days when I was a kid. But, uh... I don't know, they got some really strong moves, they can break through blocks, they block quite often. What happened to the other guy? Oh, there he is. Wait, that's the guy who bro uh, who tried to burn down the gym, too. See, if they're not in the actual school in the yearbook and stuff like that, that's kind of how I know a lot of the characters' names. I just don't really remember them. Like, I know there's a guy in the townies whose name is, like, Clint, but his name is also Henry. Which is just weird, but... Now it's time to look for Edgar. And Edgar's an interesting character. I actually kind of like what I see of him later on, but uh... Yeah, he just comes out of nowhere. He's just kind of like, oh, well, he's the leader. Why is he the leader, though? Is he... It just doesn't really make any sense. But this is a pretty cool level, in my opinion. Isometric exercise. I totally butchered that line, though. Well, this is actually a much longer journey than I, I remember. Seems like in the last level, the game's spamming these uh, these beams you can walk on. So we had it in the warehouse, now we have it here. I don't know, uh, I don't really remember if we had it with any story of and so You'd think, I, I could have swore when I was like replaying the game that it was supposed to be like a balance beam you had to walk on in the fun house. But uh, that turned out you just had to crouch underneath something to get into it at the beginning of the fun house maze, so. That's me just misremembering. And I could probably jump down here and be alright, but... I don't know, the game, I feel like it would be weird to where, like, I, I might get knocked out or something stupid like that, so... I don't want to risk it. I'll show you how it's really done! That's what I'm there talking you go. about! Now maybe you'll have a chance! <laughs> Yeah, this is a pretty fun boss battle. 
you can't it looks like you can't take his uh, his pipe though but he doesn't get knocked down very easily I was definitely supposed to be blocking but you know far be it for me to call the game a liar Jeez, can't even get it Jeez, man I can't even get the the, the, the shields even when he's like stunned oh yeah now I pick it up I don't I don't want the shield I want the damn pipe yeah I think I don't know I guess you could get the idea that this guy's like the leader because they're all very dangerous uh, kids that the townies are but uh, I guess you could maybe say he's the the leader because he seems like the most dangerous and, uh, in this fight actually there's in the beta apparently I guess it was removed, but, um, jeez, I can't even do any combos, but if you actually lose to Edgar, and, you know, I think Russell might be the only one where if you lose, you get a, a quick, like, cutscene before you have to restart the fight or whatever, but, uh, Edgar, he was supposed to have a cutscene in which, uh, I think it's right where you're standing on in the center somehow, uh, there's coordinates for where, um, Jimmy was supposed to fall into the, the acid underneath us if he lost to Edgar. And so Jimmy would literally just die. Uh, a lot of people said it was supposed to be the ending, but it was just supposed to be like a, a replay mission type cutscene, which it's still really messed up and reason why they obviously didn't go with it. But crazy to think. Now, what made you think it was a good idea in the first place? Oh man, I hate that school. My parents couldn't afford to send me there, and now I'm stuck in this dump of a town. Gary said we make them all pay. Wait a second, Gary? That backstabbing two-faced sociopath put you up to this? Ah, I bet he said the two of you would take over the school or some crap. Hey, how'd you know? Because he told me the same garbage. Didn't do me any good either. Come on, you're gonna help me make him pay for his lies. You know, you're all right, Jimmy. Yeah, okay. See ya. That Edgar guy has some goofy hair. So yeah, now it, once again we got 100%, 100% respect for the the townies. It doesn't mean anything. What the hell are you doing here? Looking for you, Zoe. I think I'm in love. Don't be ridiculous. Haven't you heard? Heard what, my love? The school has broken out into a massive fight. Every gang and faction is fighting each other. What? Yeah. Oh man, I gotta go. How am I gonna deal with this? I'm gonna need some serious backup. Where's Russell? Where's your buddy Edgar? Russell has been holed up in the Wonder Meat Slaughterhouse, hiding from the cops. He's worried about going to prison after stealing that bike. Russell can comprehend prison? Wow. Look, I'll see you later. Well, what about love? It'll have to wait, <laughs> Zoe. Duty calls. Ah, uh, poor Zoe. Uh, well, once again, I think it's cool that she's the one who, you know, she's used pretty well and uh the a lot better than the majority of the girls and uh you know the boy or whatever but yeah it's it's just uh, on my point with the, the the edgar thing it's so crazy that uh jimmy would have literally died at one point i'm sure it wasn't going to be some mortal combat you know fatality type stuff you know i'm sure probably he would have fallen into the acid he probably wouldn't have like even screamed or anything like that I just, I can't imagine it being brutal or anything like that in the sense of, you know, violent, you know, what we would see, but, um, there are, uh, cutscenes, uh, or I should say voice lines of Edgar, you know, saying a few things. Once again, I think it's the, uh, the Deadpool XYZ guy who recreated it, but, um, I don't know, it's just, it's so wild to me that at one point Jimmy literally could have died in the game even if it's a non-canon event it's just so i'm glad they took it out because it just would have killed the vibe of the game it would have fit very well at all but we're just going to skip to the next part because this police officer is pissing me off thanks jimmy come on we got to get to the school all hell's breaking loose hey jim this is your turf what the hell's going on the whole place has gone mental yeah it's your old friend gary He's the one causing all the trouble. The kid's a complete psycho, and now he's got the teachers and prefects on his side. So? So, we run in there, try to stop the fighting, and find a way to deal with Gary. <laughs> all right, one question. How are we gonna stop a load of kids from beating the crap out of each other? It's America. We go in there with threats and bribes until we get what we want. If all else fails, we beat the crap out of everyone. That's why I brought along backup. Russell. 
likes to hurt people for peace. Cool. Then it's a plan. <laughs> I Damn, love that one. They're locked. Don't worry, Russell will get it. That kind of hurt. Edgar, we'll take out the gang leaders. Without them, Gary's got nothing. Yeah, uh, it's so this is the last uh, mission in this game, so I'm gonna skip the majority of like just my paths traveling. Uh, but you know, this is the only time you get to see Edgar in free roam, so I'm gonna see what's up with him real quick. But as you can see, keep this in mind just so I can see that everybody in you know the school they're all fighting each other, it's just all chaos. They're supposed to be fighting each other, they're kind of just running around. But, uh, yeah, so just keep this in mind for uh, the discussion for next week because it has to do with uh, what's going to go on for the talk next week. It's going to go into a little theory crafting, something new for this channel. But something I find very interesting or entertaining at the very least. What the hell are you doing, Johnny? So we're going to start Why with the girls' dorm with uh, the greasers. Shut up, Jimmy. You left us and everything went down the toilet. I beat you once, I'll beat you again. No, Russell, no. You don't get to get this damn grease balls, eh? No, you don't get to get grease balls, don't ya? Hey, quit playing around. But yeah, pretty much this whole mission is, is you're gonna go around the various spots in the school and you're gonna just kick, do what, you know, Jimmy should have done in the first place and just kick every, you know, click leader's ass. And essentially, you know, it's funny. You know take him under their, his allegiance once again. Wait, did that did it just say fuck on the ground a second ago? Okay, never mind, never mind. I need you to help me. So now we're in the library with the jocks. You're just asking for it. And I love these little plants. Ted's already surprised. Yeah, Ted is already doing a lot better than he did in the first fight. I think I get the idea, like in the big game, a lot of people are disappointed with Ted in particular because, you know, you can he just has one health hit point. So anything you do to him, it's going to knock him out. You know, that's why if you remember in the last video, I just lightly punched him. He just got knocked out. The whole intent is it's supposed to be like a build up of a cool moment. You know, you run up and you sack the quarterback type deal. But I think they, I feel like they should have been able to do it in a way to where like, OK, you have to sack him. That's how it ends. But, you know, punching him and beating him up and stuff like that, he's kind of invincible. But, I don't know. Grasping the straws here, whatever. I don't even think I used that phrase right. Where are you going, huh? But Damon is the big, uh, he's, a lot of people say he's like the real, should be the real head of the jocks. But, I think Ted, you know, he's a goof and he's kind of dumb. But I think he has a little more intelligence than the, the average jock. As well, especially the fact that he's like the quarterback. Don't worry, boys. I'll deal with him. You're getting really tiresome, Darby. Cut it out. We're the only family at Golf and Yacht without a boat. Now we gotta take out Darby. He's just hanging out, enjoying, you know, his reveling in the the chaos. And well, he's safe inside the Harrington house. So. I'm just gonna chase him through a few areas. It's just, I once again want to use some potted plants. And like I said, I love breaking glass in this game. It makes things look so cool. It's got to let me grab them, right? You better. I know there's some characters that you can't, you know, they can't be grabbed or whatever, yeah. but... I mean, I hope that's not the case with Darby. Because that would be disappointing. See what else we can do here. I love how I can just punch with the, the, the whole plant in my hand. That's awesome. Reminds me of like some SmackDown 2 uh, know your role on the PS1 stuff where you could just pick up whole couches, no issues, and, and just fight people with them. But now it's time for the real one. <laughs> 
See, the Arrington House has so much stuff you can interact with that you just you can't really ever use because whenever you go in there, I think it's only in the scholarship edition once again, in which you can go in there and stuff, but nobody's ever there. I mean, that's the biggest thing uh, in Void, I think, with the interiors, but I mean, it is a PS2 game, so it's probably limitations at the time where people just didn't care, but yeah, let's make sure Darby gets his, you know, disinfectant. <laughs> Those with those dances. You fool! You don't see it. Gary's got a plan, a great plan. You idiot! Gary's plans are a load of crap. I should know. You don't get it. My brains and his lack of morals. Nothing can stop us. Whatever. I'm gonna stop you both. Now, Russell. Yeah, I think everybody and I think. I would imagine Johnny I, is probably the most popular of the click leaders in general, usually. But I mean, they're all pretty poorly handled when you think about it. I mean, Ernest, a lot of people hate him because, you know, he's kind of a perv and he really has no morals. It's like Gary said, they're all sneaky bastards. Um, Johnny, he's kind of a massive simp, so I think a lot of people don't like him because of that. Um, let's see here. Uh, Darby, he's just a massive legitimate asshole, definitely the worst out of them all. And then Ted, we don't really get to see a lot of him. He's supposed to be like the big, you know, man on campus, but we just never, there's not a lot of character development for him, if we're being honest. And then as far as, let's see, uh, who's, the, oh yeah, Edgar. Edgar's the last one. Uh, you know, he just kind of pops up out of nowhere. We never heard hear from him until the mission where he shows up, and all of a sudden he's just kind of a big deal. And he's, once again, he's a psychopath, so. Yeah, not very uh, good characters to look up to. That's why Russell's the man. I hope he doesn't get uh, knocked out. Actually, not to see about it. His, his health bar is blinking. But he just stops and randomly fight people. You bunch of bitches. Yeah, the, if it wasn't a PS2 game, I think they would be able to create the atmosphere of a massive brawl a lot better. But unfortunately, that's the best we got. Understood. Good luck. <laughs> you, what is that in your hand? Weapons are for prefects only. No! Get off my little body! Grr! Slow down so Russell can smash you! Ah, oh, come Jeez, on. Even the prefects are afraid of uh, Russell. <laughs> That's another awesome thing of why he's awesome. He's standing up for Jimmy. He's little buddy. Gary, you little bitch! Come out! James, I've been waiting. Let the games begin. Gary! Moron! Why'd you do it, Gary? Why not? I won! I tricked everyone! Starting with you, the head, the loser kids in town, and the prefects. Me! I won! You are sad, man. I might be sad, but I run your world, moron. And don't you forget it. You did all my dirty work for me, Hopkins. You're like a puppet, only dumber. Whatever. Let's finish this. <laughs> So keep in mind, it is raining, so that's something to keep in mind for the theory video also, because it does have directly, what I'm going to talk about uh, next week is directly associated with the ending and my Got thoughts on the ending you. theory. So You're take into effect, I mean, Jimmy, or take into account, so a lot of the kids, naive. they were all fighting, you know, we've seen, they were supposed to be all fighting anyway, there was just massive brawls everywhere you went, uh, complete chaos, or as you could say, maybe complete mayhem. Uh... <laughs> And then, as you can see now, it is raining, and uh, it's very, you know, cloudy, stormy out, all this and that. So keep that in mind. I'll obviously bring these points up again in the theory video next week. But it's very important to to the, the theory here. It was all so clear. You had your lust. Another thing about it too, as far as why were the prefects not doing anything about it? I mean, there's only a few of them. Complete, you know, chaos and whatever, complete mayhem or whatever. But they were just hanging inside the school. Also, I mean, what time is this taking place at? Is this after school hours? I would have to assume. But it's daytime because 
we're gonna find out a little bit of we don't really find out where the teachers are Jeez. was that a setup or why are there even all these these bells are going crazy if you get hit by one I think it does a massive amount of damage so I'm trying to be careful but I, I think that's it never mind But keep that in mind, bells are going crazy as well. Very loud outside, storming. Why'd you do it, Gary? Because I can. Because making little people like you and the morons who run this place eat out of the palm of my hand feels great. But I never did anything to you. You would have if I'd given you the chance. Face it, I'm smarter than you. Oh, congratulations. <laughs> You're smarter than me. You hate everyone and everyone hates you. Genius. The head likes me. I do love that, Gary. <laughs> Into a battleground, got kids expelled unfairly, put several others into therapy, and he still likes me. You're such a loser. <laughs> well, at least my mom doesn't make her living on her back. You're dead. <laughs> what are you doing? So, yeah, Gary said that he tied up Move. the principal, so it makes sense why he's not involved in this. But where the hell are the rest of the teachers? He didn't mention anything about the other teachers getting tied up and obviously the prefects are still out there so what is going on but um yeah i'm not gonna get pretty much i'm just gonna play the ending for you guys after this you know pretty brief fight but you know just keep in mind all the factors of the discussion next week if you're interested in that it's storming outside we're on multiple floors above you know on the roof above where anybody should reasonably be of course and uh you know it's storming outside bells are ringing all sorts of stuff. Gary was yelling, but it's going to be very important for the theory. And, you know, just watch the actual ending cutscene right before the credits, which I'm going to keep in this video. So just keep all that stuff in mind, and I'm going to give my thoughts on what a lot of people think happened in the ending uh, next week. But yeah, make sure you check out next week is the last episode I'm going to do of a boy playthrough. It's not going to be a chapter. It's just going to be me talking about a popular theory about the ending and boy in the community and my thoughts on it. And uh, so if you guys are interested in hearing that, remember to check in next Monday for that. Also next Monday, it's going to be a poll in which you guys decide what the next game I play on Miscellaneous Monday will be. So poll next week. Uh, two weeks is going to be the next game in the series, of course. And if you want to see any more chapters, commentary or no commentary, down below in the description. Thank you so much for watching. And above all else, please, please remember to have a nice day. Smith, I heard the whole thing. You're expelled. Come and untie me, boy. Yes, sir. <sighs> Sorry, didn't see you there. You know, I think I may have judged you too unfairly, boy. Yes, a little rough around the edges, but you're a diamond, boy. A diamond. Thank you, sir. Now take out the trash, would you, Hopkins? My pleasure. So it was you who took on this monstrous little wretch, was it? Yep. <laughs> what a hero. A lone wolf. Uh-huh. Well, no. To be honest, sir, I did have a lot of help from some friends. Like this girl, Zoe. She got expelled because she complained about Mr. Burton hitting on her. Burton? Well, he's fired. I hope he rots in hell. And a guy named Peter Kowalski, good friend of mine. Never heard of him. Yeah, well, he keeps quiet. He's kind of shy. Shy? The boy must be a genius. Why, well, he should be head of the school. Pete? Great idea. Now, about that letter to my mother. What letter? Finally, everything is sorted out, more or less. I mean, I don't want to say we're going to live happily ever after or anything like that, but life is certainly going to get easier.